When I found out there was an Obi-Wan Kenobi teaser trailer today, it was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Let's talk about it. Let's lay this on the table right away. I'm not a Star Wars prequel fan, so you can walk away from this video if you want, if you have no interest in my opinion. I'm also not very happy with the sequels. Really just kind of like the original trilogy and uh, Rogue One, uh, then Mandalorian, that's about it. So, I, so I'm like, 50-50 on this whole concept. That said, I think even people that despise the Star Wars prequel movies, I don't despise them, I tolerate them. I think every single one of them would agree that Ewan McGregor and the music was top notch. It carried those films. And whoever cut this trailer together clearly knows that, as we have Duel of the Fates in this thing, and man, that gave me chills upon hearing it. That John Williams score is amongst my favorite in the Star Wars universe. Positives out of the way. Who's ready to get back on Tatooine again? I feel like we've just been there 45 times! First 30 seconds is a tiny recap about how they lost everything, the Jedi were complete failures, and they've gone into hiding. We then see Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan, spying on a young Luke as he's pretending to be in a pod racer or a T-16 or whatever. I don't know what he's doing. He's, 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 having, a, he's having a ball. Part of me kind of hoped this Obi-Wan Kenobi show would just be the worst, most boring thing ever, where he's just on Tatooine the entire time, getting to know the, like, the neighbors, the sand riders, uh, cleaning out his hut, sweeping, doing his dish every day. J just completely boring crap. Thankfully, that's not what we have here. Once that Lucasfilms logo fires up, the Duel of Fates kicks in, and we're off to the races. We have some really cool looking stuff going on, and I'm sure people that are familiar with the TV series, The Clone Wars, or any of the other Star Wars lore uh, from the prequel franchise will probably be able to point things out and say, oh, that vehicle, that's from episode 16, where, uh, you know, Anakin Skywalker loses his hand and his left nut in a battle with Grievous, or whatever. I don't know. I don't know any of this crap. I only know the movies. It appears upon first glance that the Sith, or whoever is in charge over there, is going after the Jedi. They're trying to hunt down the remaining ones that got away, and maybe they know about Luke and uh, little Princess Leia, and they're going after them as well. I'm excited. I, honestly, I'm actually looking forward to this. It might make me appreciate the prequels a tiny bit more. So maybe I'll look back on them a little bit more fondly after this is done. I know people that watch the animated shows, that's kind of where they're at. We have a couple different flavors of bounty hunters being shown here. Some albino looking bald dude who's spinning a lightsaber around really fast. We have a female huntress rocking a red lightsaber. I don't know if she's a Sith, but I do know this. She's a strong female lead. And for Disney, it's about time. They love their strong female leads. Hopefully this one's a little less Captain Phasma and a little bit more Princess Leia when it comes to the writing department. I'd like her to have a little bit of depth, a little character development. We then have a smattering of different action moments and it ends with a subtle <coughs> That's right, it's Darth Vader, baby! Does that mean Anakin's back? Is he, we're gonna see Hayden Christensen again in this thing? I sure hope not. Uh, actually, I don't care. Hayden Christensen's fine. He's a good actor. We, he, he was just given some pretty rough material to work with. I, I do have a few questions. I mean, how does this work? At the end of the prequel trilogy, he's in full Vader. You know, he's doing the, no. He's already pale and burnt to shit and bald with a black man's voice. So what, uh, what do we got left here for Hayden Christensen to do? Are we gonna get flashbacks? Possibility, it's a possibility. I'd be for it. I think that'd be cool. Honestly, one of my favorite parts of this is the end Disney logo where the swoosh plus symbol is done with the lightsaber motion. I, I don't know why I thought that was great. That's just good branding. Before that, the trailer ends with our hero shot of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ewan McGregor. I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to see some lightsabers again. So this trailer, having Kenobi in it, having Duel of the Fates was enough to win me over a non-Star Wars prequel fan. All right, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you excited for this? Are you hesitant because of some of the bad choices Disney's been making with Star Wars? Like, virtually everything? Even the Mandalorian they managed to screw up by hijacking the Book of Boba Fett and ramming him into that show, thereby ruining the Book of Boba Fett storyline and hurting the Mandalorian going into season three. But, um, you know, there's still hope, like the trailer says, there's hope. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you're thinking here. Like the video if you had a good time. Subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie and TV show related content each and every week. 
and I'd love to have you. Take care. Oh my, oh, you're still here. Hey, thanks for sticking around. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies, or you can become a member right here on YouTube via the join button. There's uh, extra perks, exclusive videos, badges, things of that nature. If you're into gaming, I'm also on Twitch at twitch.tv slash adamolinger. You can see me playing games. All these links are in the link tree in the description below. So essentially you have the high ground in this situation. It's up to you to decide what to do with that.